Hi, I'm Vicky of Bondatrix and I have a BDSM channel on YouTube all about how to do various aspects of BDSM. This one is more about neurospiciness and neurotypical people on the BDSM scene. So a little less about practical techniques and more about how to deal with things if one or both of you are neurospicy rather than neurotypical. So I'm going to talk a little bit about why BDSM attracts neurospicy people, about the positives of playing with someone who is neurospicy, the challenges that you're going to come across and the key points to make sure that you can enjoy a really good BDSM life. So BDSM attracts a lot of neurospicy people. I'm using neurospicy because there's all sorts of different aspects of neurodivergence out there. So it's a nice all encompassing term rather than going into separate aspects of neurotypical versus neurodivergent behaviours and types out there. I might go deeper in this topic and start researching each of those, but this video I just wanted to give a broad outline that encompasses a generality of neurospiciness. So BDSM is all about clear rules and negotiation, which is very attractive to neurospicy people. They can find it a bit difficult navigating the neurotypical world where there's lots of expectations, there's lots of game playing, there's lots of things that are hinted at, there's lots of things they're expected to know that just don't make a lot of sense to them. Whereas you come to BDSM and it's clear, there's laid out rules, you talk about what you're going to do before you do it, you negotiate things, you have clear communication, you then do the things that you've talked about and then afterwards you talk about how it all went. And that happens every time you play with someone so you're not expected to have all these things jump out at you that you didn't expect going on, to have all these things that you're meant to have understood, you're meant to have known beforehand. Everything is laid out for you nice and clearly with clear rules, clear communication, terminology so you can explain things and understand them. There's a lot less grey areas than vanilla life and relationships. It can mean that you make plans, there's clarity, so that can be very attractive. BDSM also attracts open-minded, intelligent people and the communities, the BDSM communities, tend to be full of open-minded, intelligent people. So they will be more open to people who are neurospicy and able to deal with that and understand how they need to communicate to those people rather than the everyday world where there's a whole mixture of levels of intelligences. In order to do BDSM well, you need a certain level of open-mindedness and intelligence. So it makes it a nice, easy community for a lot of neurospicy people to get involved with. And on a practical sense, BDSM can be quite an engaging, involving, intense experience. So that can help quiet or slow the brain down, which a lot of neurospicy people struggle with their brain being a bit hyperactive and always jumping about. So BDSM can help quiet that down, either during a practical play session for a short period of time or in the right kind of dynamic with the right person because there is that higher level of communication and that person feels more trusted and respected and able to communicate a lot more openly with that person and that there's less hidden rules and things that they don't understand. Sensory factors can also be higher in neuro, neuro spicy people. So BDSM particularly impact play, but a lot of BDSM is about lots of sensations and exploring that on the body and on the skin. So for people with sensory factors, that can be very appealing, much more interesting and turn them on a lot more than just vanilla sex of just the in out, that's it, you're done. So if you have someone who is neurospicy and you'd like to play with them, there's a lot of positives to that. 
neurospicy people are usually interested in a lot of things and passionate and excited and enthusiastic so that can be great fun if you're a bit more neurotypical and you want someone who is enthusiastic and exciting to play with. Neurospicy people, once you get the right person and the right dynamic going, can be very loyal. They can have quite narrow and deep interests and get very into the kink play that you're doing. So if you want it to not just be a little bit of light play, but you actually want to get into a deep dynamic, they can be someone who is really interesting to explore that with. Neurospicy people are less likely to hint and to play mind games. They can be more straightforward. So that can be really appealing and much nicer to be involved with someone where you know that there's not these mind games, you're not expected to be reading between the lines. There's just clear, open communication between you and your partner. Neurospicy people also quite often like rules, so submission can be appealing to them and it can be quite a good way to find a very loyal, long-term slave because once you've got that dynamic and you've built things up between you, then it can be something that you can explore quite deeply and that they will be quite long-term committed to trying to make that work. There are challenges to playing with someone who is neurospicy. So they can be highly sensitive, miscommunication can be rife when you're getting to know each other. There can be plenty of times where you think you've communicated something quite clearly, but then they've interpreted it in a different way. So it takes a long time to understand how that person's brain works differently to yours whether one of you is neurotypical and one is neurospicy or whether you're different types of neurospicy or even the same type, your brain can still work differently. So a lot of the point really of neurospicy is that people's brains work differently to neurotypical people's brains. So communicating really thoroughly to properly understand that can take a lot of time to get there. But once you do, it can be very rewarding. Once you understand how that person's brain works, then you know how to play with them well. But expect a lot of miscommunication in the early days while you're figuring each other out. A lot of neurospicy people struggle with time management more than neurotypical. So that can cause some difficulties. It can particularly cause difficulties if they want to be the submissive and it's more of a long-term dynamic rather than a short-term play session. But even for a short-term play session, it might mean they turn up to the club too late to actually do the thing that you wanted to do. So learning how to manage that, understanding that their time management might be poor, working with them to figure out how to get them to things on time and to show up to things, finding out what those barriers are, what's stopping them from getting there so that you can help them through that. A challenge for neurospicy people is that they don't obey something because they can't. Their brain is stopping them from doing it, but that means that they can be perceived as bratty or being a bad sub. So again, it's all down to communication and then figuring out the right thing for that person. So it's an interesting challenge as a dom with a neurospicy sub of figuring out how they can obey you, what they could actually do to obey. You can't just treat them like someone who is a neurotypical slave. You need to figure out and work with them so that you can give them the right kind of instructions in the right way that are for activities that they will be able to obey you so then they can show their loyalty and their submission to you and then you can get something really beautiful between the two of you but just giving them the standard order that you might give a neurotypical slave can quite often lead to them just failing and not being able to do it and it's not because they're bratting and they don't want to but it's easy to perceive that if you just go quickly into it 
for neurospicy people, one of the challenges is that they can find it harder to negotiate and communicate and say no and keep boundaries. A lot of neurospicy people are quite naturally people pleasers and so this can make it difficult for them to attract the right kind of person. It means that they're a high risk group and they need to be careful about not attracting narcissistic personalities or abusers. Neurospicy people can find life difficult and they can be prone to anxiety, depression, low self-confidence, being self-critical. So this is usually a challenge for them in everyday life rather than uniquely to BDSM, but it's definitely something that you need to be aware of within the BDSM scene, that if someone is neurospicy, to be aware of how their mental health is, how they're doing with that, what things they find difficult, what things might trigger them with things, how good their self-confidence is, what areas they might be low in self-confidence, they might come across as being very gregarious and confident but they still might have certain areas where they have very low self-confidence. Reasonably often that can be because their brain doesn't work quite the same way so in life they've had situations that have gone wrong because they've not been operating on exactly the same level as neurotypical people but the world is more set up for neurotypical people so they'll have been seen to be wrong or in the bad in the past and that can leave them with some complexes that then it needs time to work through. Some neurospicy people will be on medication, so when you're playing with them, be aware of this. Make sure that it's mentioned during the negotiation before play. Make sure that you know any side effects that that might have on their body so that you can monitor them in the right way during the play session. Some key points. Everyone's diagnosis is different and assumption is dangerous. If one person has ADHD that might affect them in a different way to someone else with ADHD. So don't just feel that you can then read all up about ADHD rather than talking to that person in depth. You need to do both. You need to do some research, find out about their condition but then also do plenty of talking with them about what you found out, what you think they might find difficult, what th you think they might find easier, find out from them themselves exactly how they see the world, they perceive things, what things they struggle with, what things they find easy, what things they find interesting, what things they find boring. Don't make assumptions. Take your time to ensure that the communication is accurate and that the person isn't people pleasing. So just because you've had a chat about things, don't assume that that's it and you know everything. Make some notes from it. If you've chatted online, then you've got a written record, but then you might have missed things that you might have picked up on if you were talking to them face to face. So have similar conversations on different media between online versus face to face versus before play. Have those similar conversations at different times and you might get different responses and then you can work through on why they're different to get the correct response that makes sense, that is what that person is actually trying to tell you rather than what they've come across as telling you. Ensure you discuss everything. If you want to have a longer term dynamic with someone, take plenty of time to get to know them. Don't just think you can go headlong into it, especially if you want to be the dominant and they want to submit to you. If you just make lots of assumptions and start giving lots of orders early on, either they might just people please and do things that they're not very comfortable with and not be good at setting their own boundaries. Or you might end up in just something where you keep miscommunicating, you keep having a bad time and you give up on the play. So take your time with things, go slow, do plenty of 
negotiation, plenty of communication about everything, not just the play, what they're interested in, but also things like how they find it easier to communicate, how they can report back to you as the submissive on some play. Do they find it easier to write? Do they find it easier to talk? Do they find it easier to just give a few numbers of how they found something? Don't leave anything implied. So don't just think, oh, well, they'll know that. They might not, especially with neurospicy people. It's a good rule for anybody, but with neurospicy people particularly, don't just assume that they understand what you mean by something. Make sure that you're clear, make sure that you've said everything that is relevant to a particular topic or play scene that you want to do. Always over communicate, that's far better than under communicating. Take your time, be patient, and then you can have extremely rewarding relationships with neurospicy people in the BDSM world. If you've enjoyed this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Bond Tricks. There's lots of BDSM videos on there. I also have a website, bondatrix.com. And thank you for watching.